Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Yon's Battle, and today I want to talk about Games Workshop Terrain. It's kind of an interesting thing from Games Workshop. I've never really cared that much about the terrain. I appreciate it, but I've I never really pulled the trigger on it especially starting out in Wargaming because I was all about the miniatures. If I had cash to spend, it was going into my armies. And I didn't care that I was playing on terrain made of a ping pong table, red solo cups, and VHS tapes. It was all about getting more units for my armies. But during that whole time, Games Workshop was coming out with some interesting terrain and then discontinuing them not long after. But there are some really, really exceptional pieces and I wanna take a look at those today. I have six picks for beautiful terrain pieces. I've got two honorable mentions and I have one dishonorable mention. But first, I'm sure you all noticed this awesome t-shirt I'm wearing. It's nature in the shape of a heart. And it was made by today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM has a large collection of original artwork like this one, Heart of the Wild. I also really like this one, Lunar Harvest. It has a sweet and melancholy feel to it, and it glows in the dark. All of these bright, stunning artworks are printed on high-quality poly cotton fabric t-shirts and hoodies. The hoodies are really good. They actually have real pockets on the sides, not just the front pocket where it looks like you're giving birth to an iPhone. All of their designs are stellar, and my mom likes them. They have tons of awesome designs featuring sci-fi, synthwave, nature, and lots, lots more. I saw a ton of these shirts all over Adepticon. One guy was actually wearing this one called The Wild, and I wanted to go up to him and say twinsies, but then I noticed that I was actually wearing Lunar Harvest, so I didn't, I didn't get to be twinsies. The artists and creators over at Into the AM are absolutely crushing it with some new designs. I have my eyes on the Saturn Returns tee. If you want to check out these tees for yourself, you can follow the link in the description below for 10% off your order. These t-shirts are another level of nerdiness I didn't know I needed. Thanks Into the AM for sponsoring this video. And that number one is the Fortress of Redemption, a massive and beautiful terrain piece that I remember greeting me every single time I walked in the door of my local Warhammer store. This thing is absolutely monstrous. It wouldn't look monstrous with primary Space Marines all over it now, but it looked really big back in the day with the Squatty Space Marines. It's a really, really big terrain piece. It's got some great gothic slash brutalist vibes to it. And it had a really, really funny meme moment back in 6th edition Warhammer, or maybe it was early 7th edition, where if uh, Tau players, if your Ethereal died, then your entire army got a massive buff. And so it became a known thing that is like, well, I'll just ignore your Ethereal all game because Ethereals aren't that big, big a deal and then you won't get your buffs. And so Tau players would actually leave points in their lists to bring the Fortress of Redemption so that they could make their Ethereal climb to the top of the fortress and then move off of it, the Tau Ethereal would move further than eight inches, further than their, st their standard movement distance, and be removed from the game as a casualty, so you could actually use the Fortress of Redemption to kill off your own Tau Ethereal and get the massive buff for your army. <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of a hilarious meme, and it just always brings a smile to my face. I also love that this giant kind of tower that sits in it is got this the Grim Reaper like on all four sides. It's just a beautiful piece. It really, really screams Warhammer 40,000. And it's it's lovely and it's gone. You can't get it. It's been gone for a very long time, but it is a lovely, lovely piece of Warhammer 40K terrain. I wish, I know that they don't use um, pieces of terrain from that they don't, they no longer sell in like the current rule books, but the sixth edition rule book really was something special because you saw the same terrain pieces over and over and over and the, the pictures in the book actually did look like the Warhammer tables at your friendly, or not your friendly local game store, but your war, local Warhammer store because they made the store managers actually put together all the kits and paint them up. It was, it was kind of a magical time and the Fortress of Redemption brings up all of those fond memories for me. Number two is also a piece of terrain that I remember seeing from back in the day. The Skullvane Mance Layer of the Astromancer, which was later renamed the Observation Tower. This thing breaks every building code known to man, but it's so evocative and just hilarious. It's very like Tim Burton. It's very funny, but it's not funny in that it looks ridiculous. Like it doesn't look like a cartoon. It does just look like a really, really interesting old thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. I love that they've got the little, um, the little magician standing in the middle of it. It's just so good. And I, I see a tons and tons and tons of fantasy terrain that all is just like Tudor buildings and they, they look the part, but they don't kind of, they don't draw the eye. They don't reel you in where this piece is just so fantastical. 
It, it looks like something out of a Disney movie. It just immediately starts in your mind, come up with all of these ideas of what's going on in there. Like the, the, the magician wandering his way up a spiral staircase and walking across that little bridge to this observation tower, wreathed in skulls, doing some evil chaos wizardy shenanigans in this very, very just, it's about to fall over observation tower. It's just beautiful. It's, that's, I think, the mark of really, really good train is if you start to make a movie in your head of what's going on, I think that that is, makes for really, really good train where it's not just buildings to weave in and out of, but it's actually creating an interesting story. And this piece definitely has an interesting story going on. I, I don't play really any fantasy games, a little bit of Age of Sigmar and Warcry, but this piece of terrain this piece of terrain is absolutely gorgeous. I would love, I would almost love to see it realized in real life. It's probably impossible because just the geometry of it is so outlandish, but it is really, really a beautiful, beautiful thing. Next up, we got another fantasy thing in the form of Age of Sigmar, and that is the Sigmarite Mausoleum. This is something that actually left very recently, and I was really sad to see it go because I should have bought a couple sets of it. It is an entire beautiful graveyard in a box. It's really good. It's it's super simple. It's literally just like two two sets of the same thing. You get you've got this gate, this wrought iron gate that has been in the shape of a skull. You've got these mausoleums, these little buildings, and you can shove it all together and make like a really tight graveyard right in the middle of your board so that you guys can walk around it but you can also just kind of expand it out, kind of explode it and have just this, It's it's it would be so good for Warcry because all of these buildings are just tall enough to block line of sight and the little bit of ground attached to them. I, a lot of terrain doesn't take ground into account because it's just kind of annoying to put detail on the ground, but it adds so much when your little guy is up on some little bit of cobblestone or a little bit of smashed concrete it adds a lot to the, to the look when you kind of squat down and look at the world from the model's point of view and everywhere you look, you see detail. It really adds a ton. It's kind of the point of terrain. Like if you just have a neoprene mat with like four things plunked on it, it does look the part and it looks good, but I almost feel like you might as well just be using the red solo cups and VHS tapes where when the ground is, is built into it, it does add just that little bit more. And I think the, that the fence is a really, really nice touch because, you know, you've got your line of sight blocking terrain, you got your scatter terrain, which is providing light cover, and then maybe you even have a little bit of incidental terrain, like a little bit of wood chips or, um, or a little piece of gravel sprinkled around to add a little bit more texture. But the fences actually are like movement blocking terrain. And it's, you don't really think about it, but making that's kind of like how video games work is there's always lanes that you have to move through. And so the fence is such a great idea because all of a sudden you're forcing people to move through the map in certain ways. And that changes the game, I think, a lot more so than just a bunch of line of sight blocking terrain or tournament L's as is popular nowadays. It's an absolutely beautiful set of terrain. I really hope they bring it back for Warcry. I know they're still doing the whole forests of Gur or whatever it's called. And I do love the flesh trees with like the bamboo tree houses and tree forts. But if they wanted to throw something in a box and make me really happy, throw in a set of the old Sigmarite mausoleum. It's just really, really cool. The perfect size. Every now and then a big old honking building is great. But just having a huge box full of these little buildings is lovely. I actually do have one piece of this train that I glued to the top of my um, Land Raider for my Black Templar, and it just, it looks so good. It's good terrain. It's very good terrain, Games Workshop. Thanks for discontinuing it. Moving on to another one that Games Workshop actually still sells, or they sell a small part of it, is the Tau Firewall terrain. This stuff is, is just Dawn of War, eat your heart out. It's so good. All A lot of 40k factions have faction-specific terrain, but they always feel a little lame or a little afterthoughty, like the the orc mech shop. Like it's cool and it does fit the bill. But this stuff actually looks like you're just living in the world of Warhammer 40k. The Tau stuff. It's got slots for the drones to live in. It all looks like it, it floated down onto the ground and is the the electricity coursing through the shield walls activated. And all of a sudden the Tau's now have this beautiful barricade to fight behind. 
the railgun attached to like a little listening post. It's so good. It really does put you in the mindset of like Dawn of War and the Tau, just the Tau civilization. And if I was a hardcore Tau player, I think I would need this stuff. It's so, so much fun. I really wish that they did something this good for every single faction in 40K because it's it's so great. If you like I play Black Templar, there really isn't great Space Marine terrain. The Space Marine don't really set up shop anywhere. They're more of like a, a, a strike force. I guess they have the Hammerfall Bunker, but that thing doesn't look that great. And it's just one weird little housey thing where this you can you can spread this across a whole board. You can make different shapes with it. It is the Tau version of trenches. This is exactly what the Tau would come up with. Super, super high tech fantasy anime inspired trenches. And I really like it. It's painted beautifully on the old images they used to put on the Games Workshop web store. You can still get a little bit of this. I think pretty much I think the gun has been discontinued, which is too bad because I think the gun is kind of the best part. The Tau would put a giant rail gun on their terrain. And I love the 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 recharge ports for the drones. They're like little Teslas. They just fly in and they they drop down and then their little charging meter just starts ticking up and then they wake back up and they head right back out into battle. It's so evocative and cool. And it it's the Tau. It's the Tau world. And I just think it's the best actual chap care, the best faction specific terrain that Games Workshop has ever made. And I wonder why they made it. Like they weren't really promoting anything special. I think it did come out when they were kind of ever so slightly rebranding the Tau to be a little bit more evil. They switched from the classic Tau color scheme, kind of the earth browns to the Vior La white and red for the more aggressive, violent Tau. Even though, even though the Tau are, are now kind of a little bit more evil than they used to be, where before they were kind of objectively good, they're still pretty much the good guys in Warhammer 40K, especially the Farsight Enclave, who are just legitimately the good guys just trying to live their life in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. But this Tau terrain, this Tau terrain is really the icing on the cake. I really appreciate the Tau. They definitely seem to get the most vitriol and the most memed on of the 40K races, but I really appreciate that they exist. They're just a fun addition to the world. And they their love of mech suits, I also have a love of mech suits. This next pick is an oldie, and I think it's a goldie, although some of you might think I am crazy for picking this one, but the old 40K Battlescape. Yes, it is just like a plastic plank with some trees and a busted up rhino, but it's so great. I mean, I, I, once again, I wanna bring up that, I think that the ground is actually an important feature of terrain, and you, do, you can hop into those craters and get a little bit of cover without kind of damaging gameplay, because sometimes, Either a textured ground is just textured, but it's pretty much ex completely flat, or it's so kind of rocky and, and turbulent that you actually can't really comfortably get your models around it. But this piece, I think, is excellently designed. Those trees essentially act as a fence, stopping movement in certain directions. You've got the busted up rhino to act as a little bit of line of sight blocking terrain. You can hide behind it. It is actually a rhino and it would look really, really good, especially with other rhinos on the board. So there's one broken one right in the middle of the board, and then you've got a couple more that are driving around trying to do things. I really think that this piece of terrain is, it's not flashy, it's not showy, but it's perfect. It just looks like it's fun to play on. It would look really good in the middle of a board. Back in the day, the old felt, you would just put down some felt, either gray or green felt, and then plonk this sucker right down in the middle. And Games Workshop did sell some more blast craters. So you get this guy right in the middle. You get a couple more brass, uh, blast craters here and there. I think it's a really, really simple and elegant way to have some really interesting battlefield terrain. The, the 40K Battlescape. I really, really like it. Next up, we have an oldie and an absolute goldie from way back in 2005. One of the biggest projects that Forge World ever undertook. The Amphalon Base. This thing, I I barely, barely remembered it. I think I saw it in an old, uh, what, is, what is, were the big Forge World books called that came with like a couple of rules. The old Forge World, they're not annuals. The gray books, we all know what I'm talking about. It's so hard to actually find this thing because for, there's not really a great way to go back in time and look at the cool Forge World stuff. But this was 
a humongous map made up of like little hallways and these little these little buildings and they all had roofs that you could take on and off and it was it was like um what's it a little bit like the the planet talon in the 40k universe where it was virus bomb to complete oblivion and so everybody lived kind of underground or inside of these like super super contained living situations it's a little bit like a like the ideas of a mars colony right now but it's so interesting it's it's kind of like a little bit like trenches, but completely enclosed. It's a little bit like Space Hulk or Zone Mortalis, but in a natural environment. Like you can be, there can be, there's almost two battles going on. There's one battle going along in the tight confines of these little catwalks. And then you've got the real battlefield happening outside. And the, the two are completely separated from each other because some of them are inside and some of them are outside. And that's not really a concept that happens a lot in terrain anymore. And I wonder if it doesn't work beautifully, especially for like big Warhammer 40K. I mean, a, a squad of 20 Space Marines is going to fill up this thing pretty much to the brim. But for for maybe for games like Ash Waste or Necromunda or probably Kill Team, this would be some really, really cool terrain. Just moving in from outside to inside, moving from this big open landscape to the tight, close, claustrophobic confines. You've got these pods and each pod is separate is kind of got its own theme going on. There's one where it's inside of like an operating station where there's these bloody instruments that have just performed surgery on somebody. You've got control rooms with screens. It's really interesting terrain and it's a really interesting and unique idea. I don't know what this sold for back in the day, but it is tons and tons of resin, like Titans worth of resin for sure. And it's just a really interesting thing that I'm almost surprised that Forge Roll took on. I like I can't imagine it was a big seller. It was probably massively expensive. It is very, very specific. It would be hard to kind of integrate it into all sorts of different environments. But I've seen a couple of people take on this project and do really amazing things with it. It's a really interesting part of, of Forge World history. You do see this terrain kind of peeking around in the edges of photography of Forge World miniatures from time to time, sometimes on like the cover of the Forge World books. I'm sure they have some of this terrain at Warhammer World. It's just a really, really interesting time capsule of 2005 Forge World where they were just trying stuff out. It's really, really neat. And I would like I would like to see them try again with something like this. Just a very unique idea in the world of terrain. Now moving right along to the honorable mentions. These are things that don't really fit the bill as proper terrain, but I just think that they're really clever and I want to talk about them. And number one is the Forge World Hobbit Hole. Now you should always ask for permission before you look at someone's Hobbit Hole, but this is really, really cute and clever. It's just five pieces of terrain. And then you cut your own hill out of foam and you glue these into place. You cover the foam in grass tufts and it looks really good. The, the doorway to Bilbo Baggins house is actually reversible. So you can actually make a few different hobbit holes and you just cut the foam however you want. You can kind of have a, a tall hobbit hole or a short hobbit hole and just hobbit holes all over the place. It's a little messed up if your games of, of, of uh, Lord of the Rings are taking place in the Shire, but it's really cute and really funny. And I think it's actually a pretty genius idea to just make the few objects that po are poking out from these dugout style homes. And then you just provide your own like mound. It's it's really fun and it's really cute. And I don't know why Games Workshop took the picture of the finished product off of their web store, but it's just because they're bad at everything. And I really like it. The Hobbit Hole upgrade set gets a big thumbs up and A plus and a gold star sticker from me. And my second honorable mention is the Necromunda Zone Mortalis Under Hive Market. I actually don't think this would look all that good in Zone Mortalis. It doesn't really make sense to have like a marketplace in like a claustrophobic close confined Space Hulk style layout. It's all scatter terrain, but the really smart, good version of scatter terrain. Like sometimes scatter, like scatter terrain should literally be very small, almost like dice sized things that you that are just there to add spice, stack them up against the sides of buildings or place a small pile of them in the middle of something that needs a little bit more visual interest to look at. And it just comes with some boxes, some gun racks to display some weapons. You've got signs, power conduits, buckets. Who doesn't need a good grimdark bucket and these little awnings? 
are so great. They just add a lovely flavor. I almost want to get a few sets of this, not a few sets because of the price, but this is really, really cool looking stuff. And if you do, if you want to do any sort of a punky sci-fi, this would add so much to the, the buildings that you already have. Just painting those awnings, just some fun colors that add a lot of visual interest. If you want to photograph your miniatures in interesting settings, settings, this is the way to do it. Like not just have them standing up against the wall of a building, but have them kind of living in a world that exists. This is this is the kind of spicy little extras that add a little bit of detail and flavor to the environments that you're trying to create. And that kind of is what terrain is. I mean, you do have to think about it in terms of the rules, because if you you can make beautiful terrain boards that absolutely have no function in the game and that makes it so that you're playing effectively without terrain and that can lead to some big problems gameplay wise. But I do like making flavorful, essentially dioramas. And I think this is a really, really good set of interesting details to add to a diorama. Now getting into the, the dishonorable mentions, I could have put a bunch of stuff here, but I didn't really feel like it. You can kind of tell instantly if terrain is kind of good or bad or interesting or boring. The Realmscape Megadroth remains. I didn't try that hard on this. <laughs> they really didn't. It's part of a Halloween store dragon skeleton with five really unconvincing uh, um, ribs sticking just straight up out of the ground that's offering absolutely no line of sight blocking anything. It's just lame. I don't like that they added a little bit of dirt to the edges of it because... It just feels so fake. Or if they did it, they should have made it instead of a little bump. They should have made it like a uh, uh, yeah, a chamfer or just it should have been a little bit more gradual. So at least you can throw some grass tufts and stuff and have it not look like an actual bump. And sixty dollars. That's really the big complaint here. Like if this was like fifteen bucks, it's that is fine. It's kind of cool enough. If it was an STL, I might think about downloading it if I wanted to do like a really, really old ancient desert base with like a couple of skeletal remains in the middle of it. But $60 for this half submerged dragon skeleton. It's <laughs> I hate to end this video on such a downer note, but man, does this piece of terrain just not Jimmy my jams. It doesn't flim my flams. It doesn't jingle my bells. It just doesn't do much of anything for me. I don't really get the whole Gur thing for Age of Sigmar. It, it's interesting because Age of Sigmar is a land, not like a, a set of planets like Warhammer 40k. So all of these landscapes are sort of exaggerations of things that actually exist on Earth. But I feel like they exaggerate them the wrong way. Like literally, if this was just like three piles of rocks, I actually think it would be a little bit better than part of a Halloween store skeleton. I don't know. All the, all the other terrain was so much better. And if you want better terrain all the time, month after month, every single month, then our Patreon is the place to be. We make a brand new STL set of terrain every single month. This month, we have the Orc Brewery, the unofficial sequel to Octaris, complete with new orky wall sections and a goth rocker stage. We also make one hour episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts, and we have a tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines, and you can join the Crusade. The Games Workshop terrain is something really special. Some of it is very, very good and evocative. Some of it is very bland and boring and incredibly overpriced. Basically, the rule of thumb for all Games Workshop terrain is it's very overpriced. I wish that they kind of let, let the terrain slide in at a much cheaper price point because, quite frankly, I don't think I would spend any money on terrain if I didn't have a YouTube channel. It's just kind of, it's just too much. I don't know. Bye.